Okay, so um, what we're going to look at now is we're going to look at cirrhosis. And then we're going to look at pulmonary hypertension, uh, uh, portal hypertension. Um, so let's first talk about the causes of cirrhosis. Um, the causes of cirrhosis that we have uh, is going to be obviously the first cause is going to be alcohol. Uh, it could be due to uh, virus, uh, Hep A and Hep B. It could be due to uh, you know non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. It could also be due to some type of biliary problems, and it can be it can be due to hemochromatosis. So these are your uh, primary causes of cirrhosis. Now, um, if we look at the pathology, okay, what's actually going on? So, um, so the first thing that's happening is you're having death of hepatocytes. Okay, when you have this death of hepatocytes, um, you're causing uh, increased uh, collagen. 1 and 3 into the space of this. Now, normally it should be only 4. So it should, so we're getting an abnormal type of collagen in the space of this. And so what this leads is this leads to a fibrotic tract. Um, straight from the uh, portal triad, straight to the central vein. And also you lead, lead, leading to decreased fenestr fenestrations. So what that means is the blood really cannot be processed. Uh, by the liver and you just get shunting. So the blood is just going through the liver without anything happening to it, um, without getting processed by the liver. So, um, and a, a key reason of this is because you get increased stellate cells as well. Uh, increasing stellate cells, stellate cells, when they get activated, they turn into myofibroblasts. And these myofibroblasts, they do two things. Of course, they're going to lay down, uh, they're going to lay down a, fi a fibrin, fibrin and they're going to contract. So when, they, when you contract, this is going to make it even the liver even smaller and you know less able to function. Uh, but primarily, when you contract, you're going to increase the vessel resistance, and so it's tougher for the less blood could go there and it gets backed up. And of course, this will eventually lead to the portal hypertension that we'll talk about. Um, so overall, what's what's your net effect when you take it all and put it all, you know put it all together? Uh, you get a fibrotic uh, nodular liver. Uh, it has um, uh, decreased blood flow because of the increased uh, resistance. Um, you know, it can eventually can lead to jaundice, uh, and it can even um, obliterate uh, the biliary channels. Um, so that's generally what you have. You have uh, fibrosis, uh, you're going to have uh, fibrosis and nodules, uh, and you're going to have like disruption of the architecture. That's going to be your main uh, points with uh, cirrhosis. Now, um, clinically, what do you see? Um, in general, so we have kind of general symptoms. Uh, this is going to be weakness, uh, you know, uh, weakness, anorexia. Uh, these types of symptoms, but there is some that are more specific. The first one leads to uh, an increased amount of estrogen because estrogen is degraded in the liver, and if blood can't go through, you know, through the liver and get processed, you're going to have increased estrogen. Now, this can lead obviously to gynecomastia. Uh, it can lead to uh, testicular atrophy, and it can lead to a spider nevi, which is a little like. Uh, Vascular disorder. Um, uh, this, so you know this is uh, that you can obviously have uh, jaundice. Uh, you can get hand tremor, which is called uh, asterexis. Uh, it's obviously going to increase your prothrombin time because you have decreased clotting factors. Uh, it can cause anemia, and you can also get edema, edema because of the decreased proteins. Uh, now, how is death caused? It causes death by liver failure, uh, portal hypertension, 
and hepatocellular carcinoma. So that's the main ways uh, that uh, cirrhosis causes death. Um, and what we're also going to look at right now is going to be portal hypertension. Remember, one of the causes of portal hypertension is cirrhosis uh, because it increases the blood flow resistance within the uh, liver. And so then you're going to get back up. Uh, so if we talk about the first cause, it's going to be with increased resistance. Okay, now this can be prehepatic. Uh, this could be due to some type of thrombosis, which doesn't allow blood flow into the liver, and it can also be due to splenomegaly. Uh, and this is again because when you have splenomegaly, all the uh, thrombotic material is, is in the spleen. Post-hepatic, um, right heart failure, uh, you know, pericarditis, especially uh, constrictive, because that increases pressure on the in, uh, superior vena cava, um, and any type of uh, you know obstruction of the hepatic vein. Because if the hepatic vein is obstructed then that's going to put some type of pressure. And this could be like a tumor or anything that's pressing up against the hepatic vein or even the superior vena cable for that matter. And then within the liver, intrahepatic, uh, again, we have, of course, cirrhosis. We talked about that earlier. Uh, schistosomiasis. Um, and sarcoidosis. And that. So the other thing is going to be you can have increased blood flow. And this is just basically due to um, arterial vasodilation allowing too much blood to flow into the liver um, as well. Um, now, clinically, um, so let's look at the clinical uh, situation here. Um, clinically, what you can get, one, one thing is ascites, which is basically an uh, enlarged abdomen. Um, and this is because of the decreased albumin is going to decrease the oncotic pressure, and it could also be, you know, full of hepatic lymph. Um, the other one is you can get shunting. It's called a portal systemic shunt. This is this is your body trying to relieve uh, the high pressure in the portal vein. This can happen in a few key areas. Uh, one is at the rectum, and this can lead to a form of hemorrhoids. Uh, you can get esophageal varices which can rupture and bleed and this, this is actually an emergency. Um, it can also go into the retroperitoneum. Uh, you have the falciform ligament as well. It can affect that. And you can also, it can also lead to splenomegaly as uh, the, hip, uh, this, the splenic vein is uh, putting pressure on the spleen. Um, and of course this is going to lead to congestive spl uh, splenomegaly and um, the other one is that you can have a hepatic encephalopathy as the levels of ammonia uh, begin to increase.